Welcome back to the time vlog. Today I have Ingrid Bertelsen with me. Now who is Ingrid? Ingrid is the managing director of Evolution Travel Collective, but she's also the representative of Time in Victoria. Ingrid herself is an experienced commercial director with a demonstrated history of working in the leisure, travel and tourism industry. She's skilled in strategic management, sales and business development, supplier contracting, business negotiation and marketing strategy. Welcome back to our time vlog. As just mentioned in my little intro, I have Ingrid Berthelsen with me today. Welcome to the show, Ingrid. Thanks, Timo. Great to be here. Absolutely great to have you and thank you so much for taking the time. I know as a state representative of time, it's apart from your usual job, obviously always busy. So I think we go straight into the icebreaker session. So I give you two choices and you just give me one back and that way we learn a little about you that is, you know, not reflected on LinkedIn or your CV, which is always exciting. <laughs> you ready? Yes, go for it. Awesome. We do start with um, gym or spa? Oh, definitely spa. I don't do gym. <laughs> I don't do gym. <laughs> <laughs> um, fine dining or pub? Oh, it's a hard one because I do like both, but I'll say pub if I choose one. Pub, okay. Yeah. The news or The Bachelor? Oh, also a hard one because I don't really like either. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Let's just assume you go for the or. <laughs> um, what is your favorite travel destination and, of course, why? Oh, this is also difficult. I mean, travel people, how can you choose one? Um one that always has stuck out in my mind is Iceland. Amazing landscape and such a unique destination. So, yeah, that, that's definitely a favourite, but there are plenty of them. Have you been a mentee yourself? Yes, I have. And when have you completed the program? Uh, that was in 2015 that I did the program. 2015. Yeah. Okay, so roughly, roughly six years ago. Yeah. Awesome. So I think... My experience was after the program, after the official six-month program, actually so many more things happen within time. There's obviously the networking, there's the workshops, um, there's many more things. And for you, obviously, it was to join the committee as a state representative for uh, Victoria. Yeah. Um, why did you actually volunteer to take on that extra role, especially being a very business, a very busy businesswoman? Uh, yeah, I think it was about wanting to further develop time in Victoria. We'd had a great group of people um, for a few years that had been uh, trying to expand the interest in time in Victoria. And we were getting a few more mentees and everything who were engaged and interested, but we just wanted to take it to that next level. So when the opportunity came up to actually uh, become a formal state representative, I thought, I mean, this is the chance to actually be able to talk directly with uh, the board of time and to actually be able to understand a little bit more about their direction and then develop uh, how we go about it in Victoria as well. So it just allowed, you know, the opportunity really, rather than trying to necessarily forge our own path to actually align that path to what time was wanting to be um, in the future and out of Sydney as well, because I think they were a little bit disconnected previously. So we really just wanted to, you know, take the opportunity to really align the two um, together mm -hmm. and make sure that we were, we were both uh, going after the same goals. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. When you started that role, um, did you face any hurdles or any, any difficulties you had to overcome to establish time as a local community as well? Yeah, I think it's um, people understanding that it's a little bit different down here than what they maybe um, had in Sydney. So for people who'd been through the program before, either mentees or mentors, they've possibly only really been to the networking events in Sydney where you've got the inductions and the graduations happening at each one, um, whereas in Melbourne we don't do that. So that was kind of a bit of a difference where they'd go, okay, so it's really about, you know, the guest speaker and the networking opportunity. You don't actually get to see the inductees and the graduates. Um so sort of overcoming, I guess, that hurdle of people having that expectation um, and still wanting to come along and be involved, um, despite not being able to actually see the, induct the inductees and the graduates um, themselves. Mm. So I think that was probably, uh, a, probably the biggest hurdle, I think, um, in Melbourne, just trying to develop that 
um, and that database that was really engaged. And when you think about spreading the word and potentially getting people involved who have not heard of time before, mm. what was your experience there? Yeah, it's been really about um, having a fantastic group of people around me um, in Melbourne who have been so brilliant at spreading word amongst their own contacts um, and then getting people on the database who you know and reaching out to people through other groups that you're part of, um, you know, like the local reps page um, and local other Facebook pages are really good industry Facebook pages to be able to reach out and let them know that there's a networking event for time coming up and get more people to come along, get people to bring a friend. We did that as well, encouraged people to bring a friend, bring an industry friend um, if they've never heard of time. So we've actually had some really great engagement through um, different things like that that we've tried over the years. And pre-COVID, we actually had a database that was almost 150 people. So we thought that was um, that was a pretty great great outcome. And I'm looking forward to being able to build that back up once we uh, once we get out of this. It's a very impressive number, especially considering the current circumstances. Obviously, yeah. Um, why do we actually need local communities for time, local representatives for time? Oh, I think as much as we'd all like to say we're Australian, I think as well people also say you're Victorian or Melbourneian. Um, so everyone's a bit um, parochial in that in their own way, I think, even from a as a um, state representative. And um, Melbourneians love Melbourne. Uh, and they love to talk about being from Melbourne um, and what that means to them. So I think having that local presence here where we were really able to build our own uh, database and our own network and run our own events was really important for people from Melbourne to be able to see that because it's for them, you know, it can sometimes get a bit, oh, or that, that's a Sydney thing or that's something they do in Sydney. And mm. uh, Melbournians can sometimes have a bit of a chip on their shoulder. Let's face it, when it comes to Sydney, it's the big business city of Australia. So um, I personally love both cities because I've lived in both cities. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think having that local presence makes a big difference to people actually accepting that the program is a national thing and it is not just a Sydney thing. Um, and I think that was really important to establish that state presence. And that goes for not just Melbourne, but obviously, um, you know, we've got the program in Adelaide, Perth and Brisbane as well with state representatives in each of those, um, those states, which I think is really important um, just in terms of having that appeal nationwide um, and not just being in Sydney. So, mm. yeah. I think there's probably always a friendly competition between, you know, whatever bigger city within Australia. Always. Um, not different than hotel world at all, I can tell you that. <laughs> but it's friendly. That's the main point. Absolutely. We all love each other at the end of the day. <laughs> of course we do, for sure. Um, so you mentioned that compared to Sydney events, obviously there's no graduation intake or um, a mentee intake or graduation yeah. at the uh, Victorian slash Melbourne events. So for someone who has never attended time in any functionality, um, how is a meeting actually in Melbourne? if time comes together. Yeah, so it's really about um, networking and getting to know people and having the opportunity to hear from some, from some uh, great guest speakers. So I think um, the main thing I would say is, you know, essentially you arrive and we usually will have a few drinks to start with. Um, we've got, you know, a fantastic, usually uh, travel or hospitality industry uh, who will be hosting us for the evening, just like you would in Sydney. Um, we'll then go into another room, all sit down and we'll usually listen to both a guest speaker who might be someone from the organisation that's hosting for the night or could be someone else who they've um, asked to come in um, as part of that uh, who will be from the industry. So usually an experienced leader um, from within the industry who will speak to the, to the group. Uh, and then we usually also have either a mentor or a former mentee who will get up and speak as well about their personal experience with time. So we really, we still try and get that same engagement, which they will do in Sydney as well. Um, it's just in a different way without the inductions and the graduation piece. But then we've got more time afterwards to obviously then we um, go back into the big room and plenty of time to chat more, network and have a few extra drinks. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good way to do it, I think. Awesome. So you definitely don't leave the fun part out. Um, this is from what I'm No hearing. way, no way. Networking <laughs> definitely has to be included at all times. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I just want to take a slight angle on, on business, actually. Um, from a business perspective, how does time locally actually assist 
Um, yeah, so from a business perspective, it's really about an opportunity, obviously, to engage with uh, some up and coming people within the industry themselves who've put themselves through the program, who either are alumni or current mentees, um, people who are thinking about becoming mentees who could potentially be uh, great candidates for your business as well in the future, um, but also just being able to network and meet other businesses, I think, in, uh, in the Melbourne industry space. We don't tend to have as many events and networking nights in Melbourne as what there are in Sydney. I know from my personal experience, um, having worked in both cities, I did find there was a lot more opportunity for that in Sydney than there is in Melbourne. So I think from a business point of view, time creates a great environment for businesses to actually get involved, to meet other businesses that they may not have met before, and to then be able to connect and continue those conversations afterwards. So um, it can be from, from all different levels, I think. It doesn't have to necessarily be about, you know, uh, being a mentor or a mentee, although of course, at the end of the day, that's what we hope um, everybody that'll come along will, will want to do. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just want to add on that, um, and it's obviously more of the centralized community approach. Uh, we obviously have the virtual functions as well, um, which are always great fun. And I personally actually really enjoy having the opportunity to also see some people from the other states mm. on those calls and be able to, to talk to them. Um, so if someone is interested in, in joining the program or checking out the community, what's the best way to, to get in contact with, with Time in Melbourne or with you? Yeah, so really just, I mean, email, email, uh, time uh, so you can just email Mari who looks after the administration of time she'll basically pass you on to, to me and essentially I had one this morning that came through that um, they're keen to be able to join us on at our next face-to-face -face function that we'll hopefully be able to have in fingers crossed um, November when we're uh, out of lockdown and restrictions have hopefully eased a little bit more so um, that's what we're aiming for at the moment. So yeah, the more the merrier. I love to see new faces come along. Um, and I know, you know, we were due to have a face-to-face -face function in uh, end of July, actually. And unfortunately, it got um, cancelled at the last moment uh, due to lockdowns. And we had a number of people already registered for that event that had never been to a time event before. So I love that. And a lot of that had come from word of mouth and suggestions from other people they knew in the industry um, or via our time um, administration. And it comes through to me that way as well. So really just encourage you to reach out. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn as well if you want to have a direct chat. I'm always happy to have a chat with anybody about it. Awesome. And if you think about time in Victoria, let's say, in, I don't know, two, three, four years time, what's your personal goal? Um, oh. Sounds like an interview question, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to be in five years? <laughs> I know. So it's probably a little bit of a um, an interesting one because uh, I would actually love for us to have uh, our own intakes and graduations one day uh, in Melbourne. Mm. I would love to have enough uh, candidates to make that viable. I'm sorry, I've just got a cat who's uh, come to sit on my lap. Um, but I would love to have, have enough of that uh, eventually where we could actually hold those hold those events in Melbourne as well because I think it gives an extra incentive for um, for people who maybe can't afford to get up to Sydney to see um, to go to the networking and the graduation intakes and the intake as well so sometimes financial reasons can stop people from becoming a mentee um, and so I think if we were able to hold inductions and graduations here in Melbourne, it would potentially mean that we could open the door to some other people who maybe had previously uh, turned it down because they basically wanted to be able to attend their induction and graduation and they felt it wasn't worthwhile if they couldn't do that because it was in Sydney. So that's mm -hmm. what I would love to have happen um, sometime in the future. I don't know how far away. I'd love for it to be sooner than five years, but, um, but we'll see. Just want the numbers to grow. Awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. And we already come to the final question, which is always my absolute favorite one. And you might have heard it before. <clears throat> it we'll is see. something you bought in the last six months for less than $100 that had the most positive influence on your life. Oh, I actually, I actually have it sitting on my lap right now. His name's <laughs> Oliver. And he's a five-year-old cat that we adopted from a shelter actually last mm. weekend. And so he's very recent purchase and he was under $100, uh, unloved. He's a beautiful, beautiful cat and we already love him. 
And uh, he has definitely had a massively positive influence uh, on me already because he keeps my lap warm every day when I'm working. So <laughs> hmm. and he, he actually seems already very comfortable. I'm surprised to hear it was only last weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just shows, Ingrid, that you're a very caring person and <laughs> that also obviously uh, feeds back to, to the time community in Melbourne. Oh, so thank, thank you. you so much for your time today. And thanks for introducing your cat, Oliver, to me. And hopefully, 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 hopefully see you in person very soon. I hope so too, Timo. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ingrid.